Welcome! This is the eighth in my series of three-minute climate mythbusters, and this one is going to bust the myth of the urban heat island effect being some way responsible for global warming. Let me start as I usually do with the myth conception that is involved here. It is stated by these folks that the cities are hotter than the surrounding countryside, that urbanization is growing rapidly with the population, there are more sensors in the city, so that biases the results towards a warmer result. And many of those sensors are in bad locations. Thus, the urban heat island effect is in large part to blame for the apparent increase in global temperatures. Now let me show you why that is wrong on most counts. One way of testing this idea would be to calculate how hot the cities would have to be to have created the amount of global warming that we've observed. It is estimated that 2.7% of the land area is covered by human habitations, that's cities, towns, roads, etc. That would represent 1% of the entire surface of the Earth. The global average temperature has increased by about 1.5 degrees centigrade in the last century. Therefore, that would require the cities to be 150 degrees centigrade warmer than the surrounding countryside, in other words, 1.5 degrees divided by 1%. So the idea that the urban heat island effect is creating global warming fails on this one argument alone. In real estate they say the three most important factors are location, location and location and this is true of global warming. The most extreme global warming has occurred at very high latitudes where there are few or no cities. Similarly, the oceans have warmed, not as much as the land but they've still warmed and there are no cities in the ocean. So here again we have a fail for the urban heat island effect to explain where and how much global warming has occurred. Well do the cities bias the temperature towards warmer values? And the answer in short is no and this is the reason why. 46% of cities are actually cooler than the surrounding countryside. These are in arid and semi-arid areas where there tends to be more vegetation and water in the city than in the surrounding area, so they're cooler. There's also a study done by Mean et al. He showed that whether it was an urban or rural result, or whether you had a well-sighted station or a poorly sighted station, that the analysis method basically produced the same result. And you can see here, there's hardly any difference between the four curves. And in fact, it turned out that the rural areas were 0 0.01 degrees centigrade warmer than the urban areas on average. So we have another classic fail for the urban heat island effect from the point of view that we've just shown that it has absolutely zero effect on the temperature measurements. Well, do the urban areas, because they've got more sensors, bias the temperature result towards warmer temperatures. Well let's consider two equal areas, one urban, one rural. Let's say we have a hundred stations per square mile in the urban area and all of them are registering 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That would mean that the average temperature is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. In the rural areas we say only have one station per square mile and that station is registering 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So the average for that area is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, one way of averaging these out would be to say, take all the stations, add up the total number of readings that you had there and divide by 101. So that would be, uh, give us a result of 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit under these circumstances. And that would indeed be biasing the results towards the urban areas. However, that's not the way it's done. What they do is they take the average for the urban area from these hundred stations and say that's the reading for that square mile and take the average reading for all the stations in the rural area and say that's the average for that square mile and then when you take the average of these after to take it for many square miles uh, you get an average of uh, 75 degrees centigrade and that is the right way of doing it so we have yet another fail in the argument string that is used by the urban heat island effect promoters. Well, let's draw some conclusions. We have shown that the urban heat island effect has little or no effect on global temperature measurements, so it can be ignored. In fact, 
the analysis that are done already takes it into account and they do, do very well at that such as you can't tell the difference between urban and rural areas and you can't tell the difference between well-sighted uh, monitors and poorly sighted monitors and the number of stations in a given area do not bias the results because they average them over equal areas and then combine the results so if you see somebody using the urban heat island effect as one of their uh, arguments against global warming please post a link to this video and tell them that they're full of nonsense until next time goodbye